Hey guys, this is a load that crosses into Mexico, so we're going to try and talk to you about it and show you how I tied everything down. It made it just fine down here to El Paso. So what we got going is just two skids. It was supposed to be one when I got to the shipper on Saturday because I couldn't get in there in time on Friday. Uh, they told me it was a single uh, conveyor with some parts on skids. When I get there, it's double that. So. Uh, that, that didn't make me too happy, you know, because of tarping. So, these, not that heavy, I think total 12,000 pounds. So, let's talk about the tie down. And I'm going to kind of show you from this side, I'm going to walk to the back and show you some up close to padding on everything. Just to make sure you can see it's all padded. One little piece of carpet slip, but no biggie, it's still there. Well, this is just what I did. That actually dug into that. I mean, it's it's drum tight. The reason why these guys told me just to take care of it this way is simply because of everything is lag bolted to the skid, and they said it's all bolted together. There's no way it can come apart. So if you take care of this, immobilize it here, it takes care of the rest. The most important portions were the um, electrical motors. I'll show you those in a minute. They're up top. Everything was just tight, and that's how I set it. I stopped and I checked. I put my hand on the tarp and feel the chain. It was tight as could be. There's not a lot of room here. I mean, it, we got really busy earlier, but it's, you know. But the electrical motors up there in the gearboxes what really needed to be protected. The rest of it, it, it could have just rode. It didn't even rain on the way down. It could have rode as is. But, uh, got a little dusty and dirty, but other than that, it's fine. The rest of it, as you can see, it's just barely inside. When I was measuring the, the skids on the floor, I said, guys, how wide are these? And, and they assured me they were good. And these were folks that loaded were riggers, so they were good with the equipment, and I had no problem with that. I mean, they laid them on there, and he got it dead on the money. Didn't have to fiddle with it. It was done in very short time. Um, they pretty much helped me uh, a little bit on some of the upper, higher draping of tarpage, you know, because I ended up having these four, all four tarp pieces. Uh, I covered the electrical motors with trash bags, and then I put my uh, smoke tarp on top of that. And then I drug the rest of them over it. That way there wouldn't be any worries about messing them up. So I just had to stretch them out and I had to come in underneath and bring everything to it and tie it. And I even had two inch straps, which I had a couple of problems because it was just, I hit some headwinds, uh, 40 mile an hour headwinds, and it just ripped my charts pretty much in, in, they're in bad shape and broke two two inch straps. It happens. It was su such a violent wind that it snapped them right in half. Um, the load didn't do anything wrong, but the rest of it, as you can see, it, it's just, it's here, it's good to go. So, I don't know if we get, yeah, we're getting ready to lose battery here. Um, but everything should be hot tickets. It's not going to be a very long video, but as you can see, uh, they used plumber tape which is what that is, it's all bolted down, everything's nailed, I mean, severely. You know, none of that stuff is gonna go. All the casters made it, they're all there, they're all bolted. I verified everything, and most of the nuts that were used are nylocks. They have that nylon locking mechanism inside built into the nut, so it's not gonna go anywhere. Um, as far as anything else, I think probably the skid weighed as much almost as the unit, but. You know, it's it's pretty heavy duty plate, and I did have to climb up inside to help drape. I just couldn't lift some of the stuff over those sharp corner. And you have to watch. I did cut myself, um, you know, over there. You have to watch some newly manufactured stuff, and anything actually that's made out of steel. Watch for edges. I just happened to touch it, 
got a little nick, but it's like, uh, you know, if you'd have raked across it with your hand, then you could have, you know, bigger band-aid. So, I don't always wear gloves, but, you know, that's just the way it is. That's my choice. Everything was good. And I did wrap the chain around and laid it there, and it didn't do anything. Everything was good there. And it got a little dusty, but... Other than that, I mean, this is going to be a parts bin, like for uh, aluminum or something like that. They're going to have scrap. It's going to lead it right into a smelter. This thing is just going to get beat to wrap. But the boys in Arkansas did a good job in building them. They look good. And uh, they're a pretty good job of, uh, I mean, building them from scratch and, uh, and getting them all loaded up and ready to go. So we're just waiting our paperwork because the one thing that's the snafu is two pieces instead of one. So instantly any billing or paperwork that crosses the border is incorrect, so they have to completely redo it. Um, I had no bills of lading coming down. I had to make a blind bill. I had a load confirmation sheet for all my stuff, So, and we verified with the owner that both pieces were going. I woke him up on a Saturday morning, and by golly, they asked him, and he said, yes, they do go. So. You know, I have no problem, you know, verifying because that's a long way. It's, it was 980 miles um, from uh, Arkansas down to here, where I was at, and um, I didn't want to have any uh, mistakes or, and remove all doubt from the driver's perspective and standpoint. You got to remove all that. Ask all the questions. Is this true and correct piece count? Is it, you know? If you don't have a, uh, a bill lading, you can make a blind bill. And they usually give blank ones, like Landstar gives blank ones. We just fill out all the information that we can, and then we have a, a, a legal bill of lading for what's on the, on the load, and that's not a problem. The paperwork that goes across the border is none of my concern completely. I mean, as far as I have to have it to get paid, but it has to have it to go across the border. If my bill, blind bill get laid and gets signed and my load confirmation sheet gets signed, then that acts as a, you know, as a binding agreement and uh, I get paid. So let's just hope that um, everything gets squared away. These folks get all their paperwork printed out correctly. And uh, you know, so I had to go in and show them what I had and they gave me a phone number to call. Um, and give them to call and they are working on it as we speak so my stuff's going over the border I don't have the room on my catwalk to really dump four tarps and try and chain them down uh, there was a guy came in next to me over a different company with an oversize and he just put his tarp up on top he even left his own chains and stuff on it. he says I'll just do him a favor and leave everything right here and uh, he trusted him no problem so, you know, they do inventory sheet. Whenever you guys come down here, you do an inventory of any equipment left. I'm going to pull my brand new chains and binders that I just bought. <laughs> They're not going over the border, trust me. Uh, I got a couple of rusty uh, 3 8 chains and uh, some lever binders that are just holding my lumber down, and I'll make sure everything is good and tight so that the driver is going down don't have any issues and lose anything. So that's all I can do. Just make sure it's squared away. And I guess the battery's okay. I thought I heard it beep. It's all right. Yep, electrical stuff, big concern. Make sure, and of course it didn't rain, so I think there was a mist going on, but it was no big splashy. And usually my truck throws a lot of water. You know, I don't have any um, anything but standard quarter fenders and mud flaps. I don't have any of the big fender wells to keep all the splash. It just rooster tails all over everything so if it rains it's going to be, there's going to be a lot of water out here on this deck other than that we'll take a look at the freight border is it, is it typical yeah sort of you know this is pretty much what it is when you look around you know, they had a, a porta pot they just got it was just uh, a service this morning it was nice to see that they provided facilities for us so at least that was pretty cool but this is it's not bad I've been in a lot worse, trust me. I've been in a lot worse. Places that were just an absolute abomination, but this was really pretty good shape. So, I guess we'll leave it at that. You know, I mean, my agreement says, um, 
I get paid X amount of dollars for detention after 48 free ones. So with them screwing it up and me being here as agreed for my contract, Oid Hunter on the on the 22nd of December, 2014, I'm here. I was ready to rock and roll just because they didn't have their act together with the paperwork. Ain't none of my deal. So we're just going to hang out and hope like uh, heck. And it might just uh, delay it to the point of, who knows, I may be here for days waiting. I have no idea. You know, they could hustle up and pull it out and still get my trailer back. And uh, then I'll probably still be stuck here because down here on the border, I think a lot of people are going to be closed and they're going to be going home for Christmas. I won't, but I got Thanksgiving home. I was mighty happy to do that. I got plenty of good groceries and, and the wife and I had a good time. You know, we got to see each other and spend some real good quality time, do some things together, which is getting rare, but, you know, this is our life. This is, uh, this is driving, you know. Uh, a lot of people can go home more often, and, and I understand that. You live in a less remote area than I do, but, you know, I got payments to make. I got mortgages, I got truck payments. So, you know, my obligations require me to take care of business, and that's what I do without fail. There, will, there is no fail. And uh, I don't care how long it takes. And I was out over close to four months. You know, I've been out that long before, but it's not fun. But it was for a mom's funeral and some other stuff, and, you know, family things that need to be taken care of. And that's the way it goes. You do what you got to do. And this kind of work, um, just pretty much anything can go on. You know, so if you got obligation to take care of, then do it. If you take the job, finish it. That's what I'll do. I've done here. So these folks will get their stuff. And I'll stand by it. But you know, as long as you can take everything out of your hands, place it in their hands, and you've completed all your tasks and, uh, and your obligations to 100% level and beyond, then there's nothing anybody can say to you. You know, you're you're squared away. You know, your shit's not flaky. <laughs> so that's it. We'll see you on the road.